Scleroderma, or systemic sclerosis, is a rare autoimmune disease where the immune system starts attacking the body's tissue for an unknown reason. This condition causes thickening and scarring of the tissues in an organ. This is known as fibrosis. Skin fibrosis is one of the most dominant clinical manifestations in scleroderma. Other common manifestations involve complications in internal organs such as the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, and the gastrointestinal tract. Scleroderma can present in three different ways, limited scleroderma, diffuse scleroderma, and overlap syndrome. Limited scleroderma is associated with skin thickening limited to areas below the elbows and knees with less internal organ involvement. Diffuse scleroderma manifests with many complications and progresses to skin thickening that spreads above the elbows and knees and involves the upper part of the extremities and the trunk. There is a higher chance in these patients of developing widespread fibrosis of the internal organs. Overlap syndrome is seen in patients presenting with features from multiple skin-related diseases such as scleroderma, lupus, or inflammatory arthritis. Many complications can arise due to scleroderma and they range from mild to severe. As previously mentioned, these may include tissue damage in the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the fingertips, and the digestive system. The main focus of this video is one of the most serious complications that can occur in the kidney and is known as scleroderma renal crisis. Recent estimates suggest around 1.1% of patients with limited scleroderma and 4.2% of those with diffuse scleroderma develop this complication. Scleroderma renal crisis is characterized by the acute onset of renal failure, the abrupt onset of high blood pressure, and a urine sample that shows mild presence of proteins. So let us examine the pathogenesis of this disease to better understand these symptoms. Even though scientists still do not fully understand the damage that occurs to the kidney, here is what they know so far. The cells of the vessel wall are compromised due to some injury. To compensate for this damage, these cells proliferate and other cells in the blood system, known as platelets, aggregate to help seal the injured location. This leads to the narrowing of the blood vessels and further formation of small clots. These structural changes are the primary cause of decreased renal blood flow. Decreased renal blood flow subsequently leads to increased release of renin, which is an enzyme secreted by the kidneys to promote the conversion of a protein called angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is then converted by angiotensin converting enzyme to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 will then increase the constriction of blood vessels and further accelerate the deficiency of blood in the kidney. Activation of this process, known as the renin angiotensin 2 system, is a prominent feature of scleroderma renal crisis and plays an important role in the extreme high blood pressure and ultimately renal failure. In general, it is best to prevent scleroderma renal crisis or delay the onset of symptoms rather than treating them. Such preventative measures include home blood pressure measurement multiple times per week and examining urine samples for the presence of proteins, which is an indication of malfunction in the filtration process in the kidney that could be due to damage in blood vessels. If preventative measures were not taken, or if these preventative measures failed in stopping the progression to renal crisis, treatment becomes a must. With the introduction of angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors as treatment, outcomes have improved significantly. Unfortunately, 39% to 50% of scleroderma patients who develop scleroderma renal crisis continue to have poor outcomes, 
including permanent dialysis. Therefore, early recognition and treatment with angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors are important in the effective management of scleroderma renal crisis. Blood pressure control can be achieved through aggressive treatment. There was significant improvement in renal function shown in up to 55% to 70% of cases if begun before a reversible injury in blood vessels occur. But remember, the most important step is monitoring blood pressure in patients with scleroderma, especially diffuse scleroderma, before the onset of scleroderma renal crisis symptoms and irreversible blood vessel wall damage. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel, Demystifying Medicine, on YouTube.